Okay, so I thought I would start a new kind of Dorico for absolute beginners sort of series. Maybe not series, maybe just one long rambling video. We'll see. Um, of course, this is inspired by Tan Tanta Cruel. Tanta Cruel's excellent, hilarious video on Dorico. Uh, this isn't like a response video. It's just that that video really highlighted a lot of difficulties that new users have coming to Dorico. Because especially if you're used to Sibelius or Muse score or I guess Finale, a lot of the concepts in Dorico are wildly different. To be honest, I, so I've been using Dorico for about a year and Sibelius for 10, I guess, and I feel pretty comfy in Dorico now. I do think I'm faster with note entry on Sibelius, but I think projects get finished quicker in Dorico for a variety of reasons, even though it's a little slower and, and also Dorco really chugs on this computer, like it, um, you get the beach ball quite a lot. Anyway, that's the preamble. So what I thought I'd do, uh, I have a whole bunch of sheets lying around, like paper sheets of old walking baseline transcriptions that I have that I'd love to digitize. So I'm just going to read off this sheet and enter it because walking baselines are simple, but they have a couple of things that we can kind of use as illustrative moments. So we're going to start from a blank project because even that seems to be troublesome for a lot of people. So we're going to go new empty project. Okay, so let me full screen this. This is like a, I guess like a wizard type thing, but we don't, we don't need to use these buttons. They're kind of redundant. The, what we're looking at is down here. So the reason I kind of ignore this section is because once you you know add a second musician, this never pops up again. So I don't I don't really deal with that. Um, so we could use this button, or we could just go down here, add a player. And and by the way, this little icon. If if you're wondering why this icon is add ensemble, this is what a what the typical orchestral layout looks like. It's sort of a, an abstracted version of it. If you've ever seen an orchestral layout, maybe I'll put a little picture up this immediately go, you, you, you realize, oh yeah, the, it's an orchestra. Okay, so we're gonna add a player and we're gonna type in bass. Let's see what happens. Some, sometimes the, the search function is a little wonky. Like I type in bass and now I'm at singers. So, you know, I get it. Let's see, strings, uh, contrabass or double bass. Yeah, the search is weird. Like why did I even type in bass, you know? Yeah. Don't like it. Strings, double bass. These are just your tunings. Uh, this is the conventional tuning, E, A, D, G. But this, this Dorco by default allows you to add the low C, which is basically standard now in or an orchestral setting. Uh, for jazz it isn't, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna add it, and there we go, double bass. Untitled project, wow, okay, cool. Now, here's stumbling block number two. Uh, I wanna... Uh, let me type. I can't type. I want to add some notes. We are not in write mode. We are in setup mode. This seems silly now, but it becomes very useful when you're handling large projects. So write mode. Or, by the way, uh, on Mac, command 1 for setup, command 2 for write, command 3 for engrave, command 4 for play, command 5 for print. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's pretty straightforward. So command 2. Now, stumbling block number three. There's no time signature. There are no bars. Now, this is fine. You could, like, let's see. What, what do I have here? E, C, F, B, G, C. So I could go E, C, F, G. I forget what I typed. I can, I can start entering the music, but I totally get that this is weird, right? This isn't music. There's no bar lines. How do we add bars? Well, that's shift B. I want to add 24 bars. Nothing happened, of course, because there's no time signature. How long would the bar be, right? How long, I think you get what I'm saying. So I totally understand why this is weird. It's a, a bit of a different process when you're opening a project for the first time. So what do we do? We're gonna click the first thing we see, which is the rest. Or you could probably click the bar line or, or the clef, I, I, I don't know, whatever. We're, we're gonna click. We're gonna hit Shift M. Oh, and by the way, the Keycaster thing doesn't really register shifts, so you'll see capital M for meter. And then, what? Uh, what is the meter of this song? 
it's in 4 4. So 4 slash 4. There we go. Now, what happens when I want to add bars? Which, by the way, I don't need to do. Like, I could just start, um, I could just start writing and the, the bars will fill in. But I, I get that it is kind of odd to be presented with a bunch of empty bars. So let's see, can I just get rid of all of that? So, what do I do? Okay, I have a meter. Now I'm going to hit Shift B. I'm going to add 32 bars. There you go. The um, shift plus a letter thing, shift B for bars, shift M for meter, shift what K for key is very useful. However, you, you don't need to do that. Like, let's see, can I delete this? Yeah. So you could totally use the mouse. So here's my little cursor. I'm going to go over here. This is, this is like your, I don't know. I don't even know, like, I, I don't really use the mouse a lot. So this is the stuff panel. What do we want to do? We want to add a meter. Which one do we think is meter? Huh, okay. So we click this. Now, let's see. I want 4-4, four, four, so I'm going to click it. Okay. There it is. So you can totally click through all this stuff. I, I wouldn't do that, because it takes a while, but I totally get that you might not be familiar with all of the key commands. For instance, um, lines. I don't know anything about this. Anytime I need to add a, a wiggly line or a an arrow or something, I use the mouse. I go over here, I click. Totally cool. But anyway, we can also add bars, I think, using the mouse. I have literally never done this. Because once you get the, the popover thing, the shift B for bars, there's no point in using a mouse unless your keyboard is on fire or something. Uh, so I don't even know. Could be in meter. Could be in tempo. Oh no, duh, it's in... It's in this. Insert bars. Uh, start of selection, end of flow, doesn't really matter in this case. Um, we're gonna... Oh wait, we gotta use the mouse. We want 32, right? We can't type. Okay, mouse, so easy. The, uh, the keyboard shortcut for 32, I'll show you actually, is uh, 3, 2. Uh, and then I guess we click. Cool, so you can do all of this with the mouse. Or once again, shift M, for meter, we want 4-4, four, four. enter, shift B for bars, 32, bingo bango. Now you can enter notes to your heart's content. One other thing you usually do at the beginning of a tune is add a key signature. In this case, we are in the key of, it looks like E flat, so guess what, shift K for key, and I think this is how you do it, like there, there are many ways to do it, E, B, let's see, okay cool. So. Uh, shift K for key, E flat, B being flat. If we wanted the crazy key of E sharp, does that even work? Why would you ever write an E sharp anyway, right? If you do lowercase E flat, it's probably E flat minor. Yeah, it's E flat minor. However, because I'm a big dummy, what I do, I especially with keys with, with large um, key signatures, I go 3B because I know it's three flats. If you wanted to do the key of B, for instance, I would go five sharp. Or you could do B. I find the popovers very intuitive because more often than not, I type something in and it's usually the thing I think. Uh, a good example, like um, I'll just add a note here, whatever. If I want a fermata, shift H for hold, like holds and pauses. I type in fermata. Oh God, is it two T's or one? The, whatever. And you get a fermata. If I want a caesura, you get a caesura. It, it's pretty straightforward. Anyway, we want a key, so we are going to do K for key, and we do three flats, and there we are. There's our key. Also, furthermore, we could add keys up here by clicking. I, I'm assuming. Let's see. We'll delete this key. We're going to go over here, Key signatures. We don't want that one. What do we do? Oh, are we going around the circle? That's cool. Okay. Neat. And then look at this. Used in the slow. Presumably, if I add another key... There. If I wanted to go back to E flat here, I could just go, oh, used in this flow. Neat. Okay. That's fun. 
I'm learning too. Okay, we're in E flat. <laughs> 